Good day everyone. Uh, today we are going to learn how to do follow through and arc animation. Uh, combine both of these two in a hopping and. And we are going to see one reference character like this. And we are going to design this ourselves in Flash. Even though we can use this character completely in Flash, we are going to learn how to design this ourselves. And while we design, we are going to learn some few new cool techniques in Flash. <coughs> What we're going to do, we'll create this character first. We'll design it using Flash's tools. Once it is ready, then we will use it in a story in which this will <coughs> actually start hopping into the into the Flash stage. And then while it is hopping, we will move this head horn over here, which we which we actually witness in the opposite direction, which should actually demonstrate the follow through principle. And then um, also when it stops, when it stops hopping, it actually keeps on overlapping. It will keep on moving, which will demonstrate the, the, the overlap effect. And then when it is hopping, actually it will be creating arcs like this. So this arcs and follow through and overlapping effect is what we are going to create. <coughs> so let's just copy first this character and create a new flash file. And I'm going to import this into Flash. So that's how I create. I've opened Flash now. I go to File, New, and I'll say uh, Hopping Ant. I originally named it as B, but it looks more like an ant, so I'll keep it in Ant. Uh, 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 Alright, sorry. So this is Photoshop. I'm going to get rid of this very quickly and I'm going to open Flash instead of Photoshop. And uh, you'll see we, how, how we notice the basic, um, the basic shapes within the shape we observe and we want to design this. So the key thing to note is, is to find out what the basic shapes which we can uh, observe inside the, the design which we want to create. So <coughs> let me just import this first in Flash and then you'll see what I'm going to talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's two ways I can create a new Flash Action Script uh, 3 file. One I can create through this link over here, or I can go to File, New, and Action Script 3. The rest of the options we are not looking at the moment. And this is how I, you've seen this already, this is how I adjust the size, the width and the height of the stage. And this is the background, and this is the frame rate. Although all of this I can change later on also. So I create the, the document, the Flash document first. And notice I can change my workspace to a really complicated one like this and in this case the, the stage here is where it goes this is my stage and uh, this is my timeline and there, there are some really cool colors I can create however I don't like this I prefer small screen and there's a range of different options you can actually <coughs> select and evaluate if you uh, are feeling more comfortable work, working in a certain workspace then you are free to do so so first of all I'm going to import that file <coughs> the B file and I'm going to import it to library there are two options basically import it to stage and import to library what library does is basically it imports and keeps it over here in the library but it doesn't put in the stage the putting on the stage is the job of the <coughs> designer itself so I'll just import this wherever <coughs> it was placed it will be imported into the library as you see here so now you click on the frame where you want it to, or like in this case, I've got only one frame as you know, first frame of every new file, every new layer is uh, by default a keyframe, <coughs> not just a frame, so I can just drag and drop this over here, and notice I've just imported this for reference, so I can use these tools over here which I've got, and design something which I would like to design in Flash because I would like to use as a vector. This, remember, is a raster image, and if you remember, Flash is a vector software. If anything you design in Flash is by default vector, which is cool because you can you can enlarge it, you can you know it won't be losing its quality. And you see the quality over here is not not you know perfect. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these shapes over here to create the design, and these shapes over here to make the selections. And these shapes, as you know, are for manipulation or erasing or changing an existing shape. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, 
select oval because I'm going to create oval or circle. If you notice, it has two circles in its body. This object, this circle as a body and this circle as its head. head. So first thing before creating is make sure that this object drawing mode is turned off. Right now it's turned on. I want to turn it off like this. So when I draw anything, um, let me just, just select a color. So this is the stroke color which is the border and this is the fill color which is the inside of the circle which I'm going to create. So if I create using this option, you see this option, it is not checked now. It is shape drawing. What is the quality of shape drawing? I can select inside, take it outside, I can modify it, I can select a part of a circle and get rid of it. Whatever I want to do, I can select the border of a circle, of a square, whatever and I can manipulate it. However, uh, on the other hand, if I create something very similar, it looks similar but an object, not a shape, because this one is a shape. If I select this mode, object drawing mode, and I create a very similar circle, then you will find it looks very, very similar. However, there is a square around it, which means it's not a shape. Now, both of them have <coughs> some constraints and uh, some advantages and some disadvantages. Let's see. Uh, I can click inside this uh, circle as I just demonstrated and I can also click outside. However, this object is treated as one, one object by flash. I cannot click on the outside of this circle. I cannot click on the inside of the circle. However, if I want, I can click over it using this selection tool. I can click over it. I can change the colors if I like. But I cannot manipulate parts of this object if I like. So, this drawing which I'm making to create this shape, create this um, reference image I'm creating in, um, <coughs> in uh, this uh, shape drawing mode without the object. So how do you switch back? Click this again so you switch back. So first frame I bought uh, to create something like this first of all. So that was a little bit of introduction of how to create shapes. Inner should be yellowish, outside should be black. That's the first, sorry, that's the first shape I'm going to create <coughs> which resembles the body and then I'm going to create another circle again to represent the head looks like this and then I'm going to click in and make a copy of it outside so that I can cut out this portion this portion and leave this portion as black I'm going to just select another color just to make a difference so I, I'm going <coughs> to delete this later on anyway so I'll create this and this and then I'm gonna select these two circles and delete them so I basically do what I cut out this portion this portion which is going to resemble this and I'm gonna just change its color to black because in my reference it is black uh, yeah the fill color to black and I'm gonna paste this over here the reason I copied it before was because I needed to be an exact shape of this. I, I could have created another circle, but I wanted to be a copy of this. Once that is done, <coughs> okay, one second. So it looks as if did I delete something anyway? I, it looks like I did not. Sorry, let me just um, yeah select as black. I'm gonna move this hair on top of this circle. <clears throat> you can use your keyboard and mouse as you wish, as you like. Yeah. So I placed it just over here. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is draw these shapes. So I'm going to click here. Sorry. <clears throat> right. So I'm going to draw these eyebrows here, and. Uh, very quickly I'm going to place this over here Sorry. using this selection tool I'm going to click here and move it just around here so it represents the eyebrows it looks a little bigger which it does and I can create it a smaller size so using this pencil tool <coughs> so I'm just going to copy it actually drag it and place it here and then do that again for the other part for the other eyebrow so 
<clears throat> Make sure whenever you have selected the pencil, you select this mode. So it actually smooths out whatever you have created. And I'm going to drag this and place it over here. <clears throat> if it looks slightly tilted, you can always right click, go to transform and free transform, or some of you would see as directly free transform and rotate it if you like. And then I'm going to create this. I looks a little bigger. I'm going to create this I and just copy it. So we need two eyes basically. And I'm going to place it here and here also. <coughs> and then I'm going to create a smile because we want like a sad face. So I'm going to create a smile. And if it looks a little bigger, you can always click over it, right click, free transform, and reduce it. So I reduce its size. If you like, you can reduce it again a little more. Okay, and then <coughs> I'm going to copy, actually drag and place it over here. <coughs> looks a little bigger so I can always see remember its shape so I can select top portion of it like this and get rid of it which I just did <clears throat> and using the line tool I can actually do a partition of this make it a little bit bit circular like this and then you can select the top portion and change its color so you can change the color by selecting this color and create the legs now and then <clears throat> what you need to do is click on this pencil and draw the head horn when you draw that once this is done I'm going to create a small circle and on the top of the head horn Right, it's <clears throat> red inside. I need to be black actually inside the border and the inside of this head horn. And I'm going to place it on top of this line. Now, if you see, if you notice, this is a little too thin. Remember, it's a stroke. It does not have any inner color, but it does have a stroke which has a black color. What you can do is <clears throat> go to properties and increase it by this adjustment if you like. So. It's 0.1 now. I'm going to make it 2. Make it a little thicker. Yeah, that's better. And now I want it to be hopping. Remember? So to hop, I can get rid of this now because I've created this shape already. So I'm going to bring it a little down. Okay. And I want it to be hopping. Creating arcs. And moving towards the right side. While it is going towards the right side, this portion of it will be actually moving in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so that this movement, this movement will be drag, even though the arc is created, but this will be drag. And while this drag is done, remember whenever there is drag, drag there is follow through. This guy will follow through, meaning it will be moving in a delay. So it will be moving in a delay, meaning it will tend to remain down and uh, then it will be actually overlapping when it stops so let me just demonstrate that i create new frames after leaving every two frame i create new keyframe and i can move it with mouse but to be accurate i'm going to move it with my keyboard uh right 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 up right up right up so it looks like it's gone diagonally up and I'm going to create another keyframe and I'm going to move it further right and up so it would seem that it is actually jumping in the air but it is and then next two keyframes it should be coming down again right down right down and then again right down right down right down now one of the things if you remember when we were creating the scene you saw 24 frames per second was the with the standard speed 
uh, I can actually change that if I if I want to run this you will see it's that's that's the speed now uh, fast or slow is subjective it, if, it depends upon the animator who is creating this if it looks very slow you can always adjust this by increasing the speed and it looks faster now but if you think it's very fast already at 24 you can bring it down to 20 or 18 so whatever so I'm gonna bring it down to 9 and and I'm gonna see if it demonstrates that arc, which I think it does at the moment. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the follow through effect to this um, this portion. To do that, always don't hesitate to zoom in like this. If you think you cannot uh, do the selection correctly, so you can press Shift. And do your selections and you can select multiple things at the same time then right click and convert to a symbol I'm, I'm gonna call it head horn and make sure this is a graphic in this case it should be a graphic and the reason I'm gonna do this change is I can actually freely transform it uh, meaning I can rotate it like this see so the rotation remember depends upon the uh, center of the rotation the center of rotation in this case right now is this I'm gonna move it here and then I'm gonna rotate it like this that's that's really what I want to do but make sure where you make where you are making this change I really want to make this change at the first frame not the last frame so I'm gonna undo go here and actually okay this is also not the symbol so I'm gonna go here whatever I did I'm gonna um, undo creating this as a symbol yeah it's and I create this as a symbol okay. now I created this as a symbol which I'm I've done undo already uh, yeah so that's that's one thing I miss so I let me do this very quickly just make the selection and convert this to a symbol that's what I have to do by pressing shift I'm moving free transform so once that is done what I need to do now is uh, <clears throat> make the selection make sure this center of rotation is at the bottom the reason is that I want to move it from the bottom so the bottom should stay there and then only the top portion should be portion should be moving so that's what I'm gonna do and before that make sure it is strongly grounded this thing is strongly grounded uh, into the head and then you can move it always so let's move this a little that's the first step it's gonna take on the second frame so this is the way I actually move it so this is stopping now once it makes the first move now is when I'm gonna move it slightly make sure it is grounded yes this center of gravity is grounded okay. it moves down and then a little down again so that's what I'm gonna do uh, so make sure this is grounded and then move it a little more so it would look like it is following through like this and you can leave the third one as it was originally and now this is ascension going up this again going up now it is going down and then going down again so I'm gonna uh, change this to the opposite direction when it is going down like this so it would appear like this so maybe a little more was this so that's one hop so this is what I've created now notice uh, you need to save your work uh, very uh, frequently in order to be sure that you don't lose your work uh, to do that make sure you're saving at the correct uh, place which you can remember hopping and is I'm gonna do it give it the name and then once it stops I'm gonna create a keyframe 
and then to demonstrate follow through I'll move it back a little and then the opposite direction again a little so it demonstrates follow through before it actually comes to the original so that's one hop which it is, it is creating basically so now <clears throat> make sure you have saved it uh, yes it, it is saved by control s and when you move it you see there is arc follow through and then lastly there is overlapping 